Radio's foremost laboratory of writing and production techniques has the honor to present the second and final American radio appearance of the Old Vic Theatre Company of London, England, which is currently playing a limited season of repertory at the Century Theatre in New York. Today, the classic tale of Peer Gint by the Norwegian dramatist Henrik Ibsen with the memorable musical score of his compatriot, Edvard Grieg. Ralph Richardson appears as Pierre Gint, Laurence Olivier as the Troll King and Button Molder, Ina Burrell as Orza, and Harry Andrews as the narrator. The Ibsen text was prepared for radio by Charles S. Monroe. The score has been arranged and will be conducted by Herbert Mangus. The Old Vic players are directed by John Burrow, who has had for these two special Columbia Workshop broadcasts the association of Richard Sandville of CBS. Professor sniffle and sneeze in the dust with which he cloaks the writings of Hendrik Ibsen. Let the scholar search for hidden meanings that are not to be found in Pierre Gint. For you and for the Columbia Workshop, Pierre is a folk tale, a fairy tale for grown-ups, written as such and here played as such by the old Vic Theatre Company. The story of a man whose dreams were too big for him. They were even too big for his mother, Orza, when Pierre returned that day to their hut on a wild hillside in Norway, close by a rushing stream. Pierre, you're lying. What? Me? Lying? Well, then swear that it's true. Swear? Why should I? Ah, you're frightened. Lies, lies, lies. Every blessed word is true. I wonder you can face your mother. Just when you're needed most, away you go to the hills for weeks after reindeer in the snow. Back you come, all torn and tattered. Lost your game bag, lost your gun. Tell me where you saw this car. Buck. Uh, near Yemden. I dare say. He was scraping in the snow for some moss. Yes, no doubt. I stood and listened, heard the scraping of his hoof. Then, crawling forward through the rocks, I saw his antlers. Very likely. Bang, I fired. The buck came bump among the boulders. But the moment he'd fallen, I was up astride his shoulders, got my grip on his left ear. Just as I was going to thrust my knife into his gullet, hi! With a scream, the brute sprang up, caught my legs between his antlers, pinning me upon his back. Then he bounded off like lightning right along the ridge of Yendin. Lord have mercy! Have you ever been upon the Yendin Ridge? Half a mile, as sheer and narrow as a scythe blade. Looking downward, past the slopes, past the glaciers, past the grey ravine and gullies. Either side, you see the water wrapped in dark and gloomy slumber. Half a mile, at least, beneath you. Right along it, he and I clove our passage through the air. Far ahead, the peaks were sparkling as we danced along. Beneath us, in the void, dusky eagles fell away like moats in sunshine. Heaven help! Suddenly, almost at the reindeer's feet, a ptarmigan rose up, cackling, flapping its wings with terror. Then the reindeer, madly swerving, gave a bound sky high that sent us plunging over the edge and down. <sighs> I'm a giant mountain wall below the fathomless abyss. First through clouds of mist we hurtled, then dispersed a flock of seagulls, screaming, circling all around us, downward, still and ever downward. <sighs> but beneath us, something glistened, whitish, like a reindeer's belly. Mother! It was our own reflection mirrored on the lake beneath us. Up, up, up it came to meet us, just as swiftly and as madly as we downward rushed towards it. Here, tell me, tell me quickly. But from air, but from water, met with mighty splash together, scattering the foam around us. Well, then at last we somehow managed to struggle to the shore. Well, the reindeer swam and dragged me after till, um, well, here I am. But where's the reindeer? Oh, I expect he's where I left him. Findings, keepings, go and look. Your neck's not broken? Spine not cracked? No scar? <laughs> Your britches? Yes, they're torn a bit. 
Oh, you devil, what lies, what lies. It all comes back to me. I heard it when I was a child. It's a tale of good blood, Glessner. It was to him that it all happened, not to you. You. Yes, it did. History repeats itself. Yes, you can dress your lies up so finely. Pop them out in their Sunday best. Dusky eagles. All that nonsense. Oh, I wish I were dead. Ah, dearest pretty little mother, what's it matter? Cheer up, dear. What? I've read a pig and not a son. Oh, mother. Where is all the gold your rich grandfather Rasmus Gint left? Where are the snows of yesteryear? Hold your tongue when mother's talking. Oh. Take a look at our fine house. Half the window stuck with rags. Fences, palings, hedges down. Cattle out, come wind, come rain. The fields and meadows never touch. You know, it never rains, but it pours. Our land that used to be so rich is sour. And you, you great big, healthy lout, should be the prop of my old age. Oh. You should be seen to the farm. Oh. God knows how much help you've been to me, you rascal. <sighs> when you're home, you poke the fire, that's all you do. Oh, you scare the girls you meet at dances. Brawl and fight with all the last. Oh, stop it, mother. In that drinking bout at Runda, did you start the fight with us, What, the blacksmith? Yes, can you deny it? Now, who's been running to you with tales? The cotter's wife. She heard the yells. Ruffian, you bring me to my grave. Ah, come, come, you're worth a better fate, better 20,000 times, darling. Simple little mother, Shelley. You can trust in peer, a countryside for miles around to do you honor. Just you wait till I do something really great. You? Who knows what the future holds? If you only had the sense to mend your britches, I'd be thankful. I'd be a king, an emperor. Quiet, I tell you. Mother, wait. Quiet. Oh. That girl in Huxley wanted you. You might have won her, too, if you'd worked and stopped your lies. What, Ingrid? Think so? Oh, that Ingrid. She oozes gold. An heiress. Think. Just think of it. If you'd only liked, you might have been a handsome bridegroom now, and not a filthy smelly trap. Come with me. I'll start my courting. Where? At Hagstead. My poor man, that road is closed to lovers. Why? While you were riding through the air, Mars Moen went and won the girl. Mars Moen? <laughs> Ingrid won't have him. Bowen's the man she's marrying. Wait for me. I'll go and get the mayor. Don't trouble your late. The wedding's taking place tomorrow. Then I'll get there by tonight. Oh, you'll go and make things ten times worse. No, don't worry. It'll be all right. Ready, mother? We'll leave the cart. Too much trouble to get the mayor. Ooh, put me down. No. I carry my mother to the wedding feast. Oh, oh. Put me down. <laughs> put me down. <laughs> Not through the stream. Oh. We're drowning. Cora. Oh, Lord, help us. Put me down. Stop struggling. The bottom very slippery here. Oh, don't let me go. Gee up, gee up. Hey, hey, hey. Shall we play at Pierre and Reindeer? I'll be the reindeer. You be Pierre. Oh. Oh, I'm fainting. Oh. Oh. Where am I? Oh, dear. Now, give the dear a nice big kiss and thank him for a lovely ride. I'll box your ears. There's your house. Oh. And that. Oh, mother, that's a handsome sort of tip. Let me go. To the wedding first, you must do a bit of talking. Tell them all what a son you've got. I'll tell them all you're a drunken sot. In that case, I'll go alone. In that case, I'll follow on. You shall see. I'm in the mood to grind the rocks to flour. Eat wood. I know. Oh, put me down. Well, will you agree? No. I'll tell them all just what you are. And you shall stay just where I choose. Never. I will follow on behind. Oh, no, you won't. Oh, yes, I will. Then I'll put you up here on the roof. Lift me down. Will you listen then? No. Mother dear, take my advice. Lift me down this instant, dear. I won't. Don't move your legs. Sit tight. Don't tear the thatch because you might fall off. And then... Oh, you horrid beast. No kicking, mind. I'll wallop you. Wallop away, but don't fall off. Goodbye. I'll soon be back. Goodbye. Look out, you fall. Goodbye. Come back. Here. God help me. Will you listen? No. He's off across the fields. I'm fainting. Help! at last. I'll be there pretty soon. 
I wonder if Ingrid... I'll cut across here. I'll climb over the fence and go over the moor. I wonder if Ingrid's alone in her room. Oh, here they come, swarming like flies with their gifts for the bride. I'm beginning to think I'll go home. They'll only start laughing behind my back. Well, I really need a good stiff drink and their sneers that pass over my head. Well, they're coming. I don't want them to see me. I'll hide. The Gins had money once, but they lost it all. Drink finished his father. His mother's a shrew. Then it's not surprising the son's what he is. Like father, like son's the same goes. Mm. That's me they were praising. <laughs> well, I won't press. Never knew gossip kill anyone yet. I think I'll lie here on my back in the heather. Look at that. It's here again. The swine's dead drunk again. Your magic. Get up if you're able, Pay again. Oh, it's a blacksmith, it's Aslak. And what do you want? Don't you worry. We're not staying here. But where have you been, man? Where have you been hiding? We've been gone six weeks. We are caught by the troll. I'm astounded myself at the things I've been doing. Oh, let's hear. No point. It had never sink in. Are you coming to Hexton? No. People say Ingrid used to be sweet on you. You dirty face crow. Keep that temper, my lad. If Ingrid's giving you up to the others, don't forget, you're the son of John Moneybags. <laughs> Go to blazes. You'll find someone or other who'll have you. Good evening. I'll pay your respects to the bride. <laughs> <laughs> All I care, Ingrid can marry whoever she pleases. Oh, well, let her. I don't care a damn. My breeches and tatters, my clothes torn to shreds. If only I had a decent new suit. I'd like to sharpen a butcher's knife and cut the mockery out of their hearts. Who, who's there? Who's there? I heard somebody tittering. I swear I heard something. Well, I must have been wrong. I must go home to Mother. Oh, look! Down at Hagstead, they're ready for dancing. The sun's going down. Oh, such girls, such girls. Seven or eight to each man. Oh, I must join in. I can't miss the dancing. Oh, but Mother will still be up there on the roof. Listen, the Halley. They're putting some life in it. Bottoms in form with that fiddle of his. His notes flash and sparkle like spray in a waterfall. Girls, girls, girls. Oh, but Mother up there. Oh, I must join in. I can't miss the dancing. <laughs> Crying a bit. Would you ever to get a notice of that? Come along, friend. Drink up. the got more than that. Thank you. I'm finding it hard to keep pace. That's <laughs> Gabby and Gotham. Scrape away till you bust. Great city niggers out over the hillside. Look! Here's my mom, the bridegroom. She fucked his father by the sea. Why is he not with Ingrid, his bride? <laughs> father? I've tried, but she won't. She's standoffish. Eh? What won't she? She's gone and locked herself in. Well, what about going and finding the key? I don't know where to look. Oh, you're a baby. Oh, but father! Oh, gosh! Here, Vince just arrived. Things are going to get lively. Who asked him, anyway? That's what I'd like to know. Take no notice, girls, if it's twice to get friendly. As far as I go, he doesn't exist. Yes, he is. Well, who's the best dancer here? Which one is Twinkle Toe? Not I. Not I. I'm certain I'm not. Well, then you, oh. before somebody better turns up. I'm afraid I'm just going. Going so early, you can't be all there. <laughs> Look, Pierre, she's gone off with that scabby old rat. At this country dance, Pierre Gint first sees Solve, whose father, like other fathers, does not view this wild youth with favor. Please, sir, may I dance with your daughter? We must go and pay our respects to our host. Come, wife. Come, daughter. We'll go into the house. Oh, how lovely she is. I know no one as lovely. Her eyes cast down on her apron, so white. And the way she held on to her mother's dress and carried her prayer book wrapped in a kerchief. I must go after her. I think it was you who asked me to dance. Yes, it was. Come on. Oh, Mother says, don't go too far away. Mother says, Mother says, were you born yesterday? You were laughing at me. Why? You're still quite a baby. Oh, no. I was confirmed last spring. Oh. Well, tell me your name. 
and we'll feel more at ease. My name is Solvay. And what is yours, please? Pierre Guinness. Oh, oh, my goodness. Well, what's wrong with that? When my God has worked loose, I must go to the house. <laughs> Brandy, Pierre? No, thanks. Come, come. Just a pot. Well, a pot then, no more. <laughs> we ought to be going. Are you afraid of me, girl? You showed us a few things at Lunda. Oh, I can do more than that once I start. And he's starting, believe me. Come on, let it rip. Tell us what you can do. No, tomorrow, tomorrow. No, no. Are you good at black magic? I've conjured the devil. Oh, my grandmother did that before I was born. Liar! No one else living can manage that trick. I conjured the devil inside a nut. The nut was worm eaten. Well, that's obvious. Oh, he cried. He tried hard to bribe me with this and with that. Was he forced to get in? Yeah, he was. Then I plugged up the hole with a pin. <laughs> you, Lord, you should have heard the buzz and the rumble. But where is he now? Is he still in the nut? No, no. The, the devil was clever. He got clean away. That's why the blacksmith hates me to this day. Really? And you know, I went to the blacksmith and asked him to hammer that nut for me. He said, of course. Well, he took hold of the nut to hammer it flat, but being as heavy-handed as as Did he kill the devil? He hit like a madman, but the devil went up in a fury of flame. Way! Straight, straight through the roof from the wall. And the smith? Just gaped. His hands roasted like beef. <laughs> and since that day, we've never been friends. That's very likely. What? One of his best. What, are you hinting that I made it up? Not at all. I know you didn't. It was one of my grand. Dad stock story. You liar! It happened to me. All right, dear, we won't argue. <laughs> well, I, I, I can ride through the air on a horse. I can bridle. <laughs> come on, ride through the air in my own good time. They'll come and I'll ride like a whirlwind over you all. It'll all fall at my feet. Start staring mad. He's gone off his head. The, boat, the liar. You wait. Mark my words. You mark mine, my boy. We'll warm your beak for you. He's a bloody good hiding. Juicy black eye. First time I lie. I'll show the lie. Show the lie. Yes. Good evening, Pierre. Oh, it's Mars, the bridegroom. Why are you not with Ingrid, ma'am? Listen, Pierre. Is it true you can ride through the air? Well, of course it is, Mars. Not much I can't do. I suppose you've got the invisible coat. What hat, you mean, of course. Sorry, you're back. Oh, go away, Mars. Oh, oh sorry. Now, let's have our dance. I, I'm quite light on my feet. Oh, please let me go. Let you go? You're so wild. Like the rain day, eh? When the summer comes on, come along, sorry. Don't be obstinate. No, no, I can't. No, I dare not. Why? You've been drinking. Oh, don't go. Please come back. Here. Here. What is it, Mars? I wish you'd help me get into her room. What? Ingrid's? Where is she? In the loft. Oh, I see. It's the least you can do. You might have a try. Well, to get your bride, you must do that yourself. Oh. Ingrid, in the loft. Huh. Wait, Mars. Wait for me. Salve! Salve! Oh, oh come here. Won't you change your mind? As you're ashamed of me, I look like a tramp. But you don't. It's not true. I don't think it is true. Yes, I do. And what's more, I'm a little bit drunk. I was hurt. You'd offended me. That's why I did it. Oh, will you? No, I dare not. I'm afraid. Afraid? But of whom? Well, mostly a father. Oh, a father, I see. Is he very straight-laced? Does he rule with an iron rod? Huh. Well, answer me. Well, what can I say? Was well, your father religious? And you and your mother, are you the same kind? Why don't you answer me? Please let me go. No, I won't. I can turn myself into a troll. At the stroke of twelve, I'll be in your room and you'll hear a strange noise, a hissing and spitting next to your bed. And it won't be a cat. Oh. Me. Oh, no. Oh, I don't mean that. Dance with me, Salvo. No. Now you're fine. <laughs> Pierre, Pierre, I'll give you an ox if you'll help me. All right, Mars, come along then. The loft, you see. Oh. Have you killed him? No. Piergint has... Look. Where? Up there on the hills. Oh. Piergint. With the bride. With, with the bride. bride. Oh, the beast. The sheer precipice. Oh. He's climbing. Oh. 
Look how he's carrying her. She might be a pig. <laughs> he's stolen my good. I'll strike him dead. <laughs> It's Ingrid. Oh, oh, go away. Where can I go? Wherever you like. You villain, you... Oh, hold your tongue. This is where we part for good. Memories bind us two forever. The devil take all memories. The devil take all women, too. Excepting one. Who is the one? Not you. Well, then, who is she? Oh, go away. Go home. Go back to your father. You can't mean what you're saying. Every word. You steal what you want. And pack me off. Well, tell me what you have to offer. Hagstead Farm, and a good deal more. Is your prayer book in your kerchief? Where's your plait of golden hair? Do you gaze down at your apron? Do you cling to your mother's dress? Answer. No. Were you confirmed last spring? No, but listen, tell dear. Tell me, does a holy feeling come to those who see you? Answer. No, but... That's all that matters. They'll hang you if you fail me now. The risk worth hanging for. You'll get a farm. You'll be respected. If you take me... Impossible. Here, come back. Oh. Go. <laughs> you were a swindler. I was a fool. Your mind's made up. Firm as a rock. All right, then. We'll see who wins. She's gone. The devil take all memories. The devil take all women, too. Excepting... One. lake in the moorland. A storm is blowing up. Orza is searching for Pierre, calling, calling. She is in despair. Salve can hardly keep pace with her. Salve's father walks behind. to drown him. The mountains would slip away and crush him and all those people trying to kill him. Oh, please, God, they must not. I can't do without him. Rest for a little. The mist may clear. Sit by me. It's more sheltered here. I can't believe this has really happened. We were as one in our sorrow and need. I expect you've heard of my husband's bad name. How he roamed the district, throwing away his money like dirt. How he drank and he swore. While I and Pierre sat alone in the house. What could we do but try to forget? Well, we... We found comfort in fairy tales about emperors and trolls and stolen brides. Who'd think that these tales would stick in his mind? Listen. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. Poor thing. Not a soul to be seen. Oh, my poor lost lamb. You are right. He is lost. No, don't say that. He hardened his heart. His soul is lost. No, no. Our Lord will have pity on him. Did he pity Ingrid? Or did he scoff at her helplessness when he packed her off? He stole the girl. He must take the blame. He's loaded down by the weight of his shame. He'll rise up and fly through the air. You'll see. 
He did it before on the end in edge. Nothing's beyond him, I tell you. You wait. If he lives long enough, he'll do something great. It would be better to see him hang. <laughs> With the rope round his neck, his eyes might open. He might repent. Oh, you're driving me crazy, then, talking like that. We must find him. To save his soul. If he's in the marsh, we must drag him out. We must ring church bells if the towers have got him. Look, a footprint. I'll follow him up. No, go back to the valley but and the ring church bells. Bid the them boy. ring the bell. You stay with me. Bid them ring the bell. Tell me more about your son. About my son? Yes. Everything. Tell you everything. I tire you out. You tire of talking long before I tire of hearing. now a fugitive from the angry village folk who seek vengeance for his carrying away of Ingrid, Mars Moan's bride, and for deserting her. He has fled farther up the mountain, and all around him snowy peaks tower and gleam in the sunset. In a delirium, he gazes wildly about him. Look at that glittering gate. Stop, will you stop? It's drifting further and further away. Oh, there's a band of glowing iron pressing upon my head. There's a sound of bells in the distance. Ah, there go two golden eagles. And the wild geese flying low. Here am I, plodding and stumbling, delirious in the snow. Look, there's the end of a gable. It's rising bit by bit. It's growing out of the mountain. It's my old grandfather's farm. The rags have gone from the windows. The palings are spruce and new. In every room, lights are blazing. There's a banquet in the hall. I can hear the parson tapping his knife against his glass. The captain flings his bottle. It smashes against the wall. Let them be lavish and squander. What's the matter? Mother, be quiet. Rich John Gint's giving a party. Hurrah for the house of Gint. What's all this bustle and hubbub? What's all this hullabaloo? The captain's calling for me. The bishop's drinking my health. In you go then, Pierre, to the toasting. It rings out in clamor and song. Pierre Gint, you were born to greatness. And great you be before long. Pierre has leaped forward. But striking his head against a rock, falls to the ground unconscious. He begins to dream a horrible nightmare. Though his first dream creature is a charming woman in green. Is that true, Pierre? That you'll be great before long. Who are you? Walking with the leaves, dressed in green. Do I dream you? How came I here? Is that true, Pierre? As true as the fact but I am pure, as true as the fact that you are gracious and fair. Will you have me? <laughs> You'll see how nice I'll be. You won't have to weave or spin or mend. You'll have lots to eat and lots more to spend. And I'll never, never pull your hair. Don't beat me. We sons of kings don't beat our women. You're a king, son. 
Yes. Well, I'm the daughter of the King of the Dover Mountains. Are you now? Well, what a coincidence. My father's palace is deep in the run. My mother, I feel quite sure, is grand. You know my father? His name's King Brother. You know my mother? Her name's Queen Orza. When my father's angry, the poor winds awake. When my mother starts scolding, the earth starts to quake. My father can kick as high as a pot. My mother can grind the rocks to flour. Oh, nothing to wear besides rags and tatters. It's the man inside the britches that matters. Every day I wear silk and a golden pelisse. Now, it looks more like toe and verdi. Ah, yes, darling. There's one thing that you must remember. In Miranda, we see with another sense, and everything seems to have a double shape. Mm-hmm. When you see my father's house, you might think it an ugly pile of rubble. How peculiar. It's the same with us. Mm-hmm. You might fancy the gold is worthless dross, <laughs> and a glittering window pane will look. Like a bundle of stockings and spongy moss. Evil seems good. And black seems white. Little, no big. And dull looks bright. I see we are made for each other, Pierre. Like bridges for legs or bottoms for chairs. My steed shall bear the bridegroom and bride. It looks to me like a pig you ride. He marks his neck. I am proudly made. Get up, get up. We'll gallop away to your father's palace, Giotto Tau. And I was feeling so sad just now. It goes to show the face the cunt. Great folk are known by the style of their mouth. the troll king of the Dovre Mountains, a cavern deep under the mountains. Trolls assembled, young and old, great and small. They have the heads of pigs, baboons, women or fish, furry tails, the voices of oxen or children or macaws. The troll king on his throne with scepter and crown. His daughter, the woman in green, standing close by. Children and relatives grouped around. Here, Gint in the middle of the hall, alone. Preening ourselves, our affairs of late have been going downhill, and no one knows whether we'll crash or recover. So we can't refuse help, whatever the sort. Besides, the young man is almost without blemish and virile too, as far as I can see. Darling, <laughs> so you're after my daughter. Well, your daughter and your kingdom thrown in as her dowry, of course. <laughs> I'll give you half while I'm still alive. You can have the rest the day I snuff out. Well, that, that's fair enough. Uh, wait a moment, my lad. You've got to make a few promises, too. If you break them, our pact becomes null and void, and you'll be lucky to get out of here alive. First of all, you must promise to wipe your mind the whole world outside the Ronda Mountain. Well, I'm king here. That ought to be easy. Out there, among men living under the blue, the saying says, man to thyself be true. In the hills, we have no time for such self-righteous stuff. Our saying goes, troll. 
to thyself be enough. Wrongs of unselfishness be true must be enough, my boy, for me and you. But, uh... It must if you're going to be king here. Well, if it must, it must. It isn't worth... Next, you must uh, shed your Christian britches. Up here in the Dover, we show our riches. <laughs> Where's your tail? You must wag it and wave it. I haven't a tail. I can give you one. Chamberlain, fasten my Sunday tail on him. No, you won't. You're making a fool of me. You can't boo my daughter without a tail. But you turn men into beasts. Oh, my son, you are unkind. I'm turning you into a gallant foe. We'll give you a flame yellow tip for your tail. <laughs> Well, they, they say we have feathers in the wind and custom and fashion must carry us with them. All right, go ahead. <laughs> You're a wise young man. The serious part of our meeting is ended. Now we will feast our eyes and our ears. Hoppest, pluck gently the Dover harp strings. Dancer, tread lightly the Dover hall floor. <laughs> What do you think of it? Think. Speak your mind. What do you see? Well, something frightfully ugly. <laughs> a, a bell cow twanging a string with her hoof, a sow in short socks, out of step with the discord. <laughs> Dear my son, I must do what I can to cure all your peculiarities. And how will you do that? I'll scratch your left eye. Then you begin to see your right. <laughs> then I cut your right window pane. Are you drunk? And then you see that your bride is lovely. Mm. Your eyes will never deceive you again with sows out of step and bell cows twanging. This is lunacy. The drunk is and he's the wise one. You're the fool. Think of all the annoyance and worry you'll rid yourself of in the course of the years. And try to remember that the the eyes are the source of bitter, angry tears. Well, now, tell me, tell me, when, when will my sight be restored to normal again? <laughs> Never, my friend. Oh, if that's the case, I must say, no thing. <laughs> then what are you going to do? Leave at once. <laughs> Now, on my life, I'm losing my temper. And I'm not here to be trifled with. You long-legged ass, do you know who I am? To begin with, you're far too free with my daughter. That's a lie. Can you deny that you cast a lecherous eye on her? That's not such a serious crime, after all. By the end of the year, you'll be a proud father. <laughs> if, if I could wake up, you'll be surprised when you see your brat half-breeds grow at a prodigious speed. Hey, hell there, you and your daughter, too. <laughs> oh, fear, and now, my boy, for you. Smash him and back him to Dick Thunder shall I go? Tell me, who are you? Move aside. I can say what I like, and my sword can strike hard. Take care, or I'll bring it down on your head. Who are you? Myself. What are 
are you? The great boy, the great boy. All round about here. I will go through you. <clears throat> ah, he's fallen. Ah, there are more of you. But I have my fists. Rely on your fists. Have faith in your strength. Backwards or forwards, it's just as far within or without. The path is as narrow. Here, he's there, he's all around. Fight, you must. A great boy gets his way by gentleman. Give me claws and teeth to rend my flesh. Let me feel my own blood. Let me taste my own blood. If you want to save me, girl, do it at once. Don't stand there gazing shyly downward. Your prayer book, fling it straight in his face. from his dream. He has called out to Salve as she stands over him with a basket of food. Her search ended. Now, seeing that he wakes, she runs through the forest. He struggles to rise. Uh, Salve! Salve! Salve, where are you? If you come over here, I'll run away. Are you still afraid that I might cuddle you? For shame, Pierre! Aha! Do you know where I was last night? The tall king's daughter was chasing me. Then we did right to ring the church bell. Pierre Ginslot, the sword who's so easily caught. Well, say something. Oh, oh, Pierre. Oh, wait. Don't run away. I meant no harm. Salve. Salve. Don't forget me. They must stop these wonderful cloudy flights to an airy world that never was. You're an outlaw, my lad, a fugitive, yes, an outlaw. No longer will your mother bring your food and lay the table. If you want to eat, you must help yourself. Hunt in the forest, fish in the streams, chop your own wood and light your own fires. Build your own house and set it in order. I'll build a beauty up on the roof. I'll have a tower and a weather vane, a mermaid carved on the gable end. <laughs> looking for. I'm going crazy. Where is the key to the chest? But, Oza, don't you remember? They've taken the chest and all your things. For what? For the theft of the bride at Hagstead. Have mercy, God. The whole house cleaned out. It's shameful that people can be so harsh. The farm and the land have gone forever. Old Hagstead was hard, but the law was harder. No one would help me. No one showed pity. They outlawed my boy. Put him out. He's an outlaw. He must build his own house out there in the forest. 
Hunt like a beast for his meat. Fish the stream. This house is yours till the day you die. Bread of charity for me and my cat. You've got your peer to thank for your misery. My peer to thank. You're getting muddled. Ingrid got home safe enough in the end. They'd have shown more sense if they'd blamed the devil. He's the culprit. Why don't they blame him? A father of lies tempted my poor boy. Wouldn't it be best to send for the parson? Things may be even worse than you think. Send for the parson. Perhaps I should. But, oh God, no, I can't. I'm the boy's mother. I must help him. It's my sacred duty. Everyone's failed him. I'll do what I can. They've left him this coat. I'll patch it up. Would that I dared to filch the rug. Where are the stockings? There, with the rubbish. Kari, what's this? Oh, yes. It's an old casting label. It was one of his toys. He used to melt metal for buttons in this. He'd pretend to be a button molder. Once at a party, the boy marched in and asked his father for a piece of lead. Not lead, said my husband. I'll give you silver. King Christian's coin for the son of John Gint. God forgive him. He was in such a state he couldn't distinguish between lead and gold. <laughs> Here are the stockings. Oh, they're full of holes. I'll have to darn them. It won't be too soon. When I finish them, I'm going to bed. I'm so tired. And I feel so wretched. Carrie, look. Two shirts. They forgot to take them. Who oh, they have? That's a bit of good luck. I think I can safely keep one of them here. No, I don't see why I shouldn't take both. The one he's wearing is quite threadbare. That all, sir. You know that that's a sin. I do know. I know, too, that repentance absolves us from sin. Well, I repent. <laughs> Deep in the forest, Peer has completed his new hut. There are reindeer antlers over the door. The snow is piled high. It is dusk. Here stands outside the door, fastening a large wooden bolt. There must be a bolt. A bolt to secure the door against trolls, against men and women. There must be a bolt. A bolt to keep out the venomous breed of hobgoblins. They come when night falls. They knock on the door. Open, Pierre Gint. There is nimble as thoughts. They're under the bed, wink in the embers, blow down the chimney like flaming dragons. God speed your work. Solve it. Don't send me away. You sent and I came. Now I am yours. Solve it. You're not afraid to come so near me? There were messages in your mother's words. Messages in my crowded dreams. The long, long nights and the empty days brought me the message that I must come. Down there, all the joy had departed from life. Laughter and tears were denied to me. I didn't know what was in your mind. I only knew what I should and must do. But your father? In the whole wide world, I've no one to call father or mother now. I've left them forever. So they my precious to come to me. Yes. For you alone. You must be all to me. My friend and my life. But you know the sentence they've passed on me? How they even took my inheritance? It's not for your good that I left my loved ones. But you know the rest. My life's at stake. If anyone takes me outside this forest... I asked my way here. And when they questioned me, where are you going? I answered, home. Then away with nails and bars and bolts. I need no bolts to hide me from hobgoblin thoughts. If you dare to dwell with me here, my love, I know my heart will be consecrated. Oh, let me carry you. You're so slender and light. May I carry you? Oh, I will never tire. Oh, Salve. You're so lovely, so warm. Who would have thought I could make you love me? Oh, I've longed for you, day and night. Look, I built this. 
I love it. It's yours. Oh, it's easy to breathe in the wind up here. The valley was stifling. I felt entombed. It was partly that feeling that drove me away. But here, I can hear the wind in the trees. Silence and song. Here I am at home. Salve, are you quite sure it will be forever? I have come to you. There is no way back. Then you're mine. Go in. Let me see you inside. Go in. I'll get some logs for a fire. It'll soon be snug and bright and warm. You'll always be cozy. You'll never be cold. Go in. I must see you inside. My princess, I've found her and won her at last. Now a king's palace shall rise from the ground. What? Who are you? He asks who we are. <laughs> All friends, Pierkins. My house is quite near. We are neighbors. Indeed, that's news to me. As your hut was built, mine grew at its side. Well, I'm in a great hurry. So you wear in the Ronda. You always wear. But I'll plod along and still keep you in sight. You're mistaken, old woman. Oh, no. I was once when you made your promises under the leaves. Made you promises? What do you mean? That evening you came to my father's palace. Have you forgotten? What never took place? What nonsense is this? When last did we meet? The last time we met was the first time we met. Mm. Boy, your father's thirsty. Give him a drink. Father, that brat? Are you trying to say... You can always tell a pig by its skin. Where are your eyes? Can't you see he's as crooked in the shanks as you are in the mind? Are you trying... Are you trying to wriggle out? Crook-legged brat. He has grown very quickly. You old witch, you don't dare to tell me... If you want to see me as fair as before, you only to turn that girl out of your house. Put her out of your mind and out of your sight. Do that, and my beauty will return. Get away, you hell. You'll see if I will. I'll kill you. Try if you dare. Oh, no, Pierre Git. I can stand hard knocks. You'll find me back here every single day. I'll open the door and spy on your boat as you're sitting in the fireside glow. And you want to love her and kiss and embrace. I'll be at your side in my rightful place. We'll share you. Farewell, my dear Pierre. Now go and get wet. You hell fiend. Oh, dear. I nearly forgot. You'll have to look after your son, you wretch. Go on, little devil. Go to your father. I'll bring you with my axe. You wait. Just you wait. Oh, dear. What a head he's got on his shoulders. You'll be daddy's double when you grow up. I wish you as far away as we are near. And all arises from thoughts and desires. It's hard on you, Pierre. It's worse for her, Salve, my loveliest, purest gold. Oh, yes. It's the innocent who always suffer. The devil said that when his mother thrashed him because his father turned up dead drunk. Go round about, said the boy. That's what I must do. My king's palace has crashed before my eyes. We were so near, and now she's so far. Go round about. There's no way that leads straight through from me to her. Straight through? Well, perhaps there might still be a way. I think the Bible has something to say about repentance. But what does it say? I've no Bible. I've forgotten. There's no one to guide me here in the forest. All the same, the old witch was telling lies. She's out of my sight with her filthy ideas. Out of my sight, but not out of my mind. Insidious thoughts will follow me. No, no. I must find a way to go round about. Not for gain or for loss, but to cleanse myself forever from things that are best forgotten. What going after this so foul and smirched? Go in with trolls about my heels. Speak, but be silent. Confess. Yet conceal. Are you coming? Go round about. Pierre, 
You must wait, Salve. It's dark here, and I have a heavy load. Wait! Let me help! No, stay where you are. I must bear it myself. Well, don't be too long. Be patient, dear. You must wait for me. I will wait for you. God, will he never come back here? The nights are so endlessly long. I can't even send a message, and I have so much to say. There's no time to be lost. Not a moment. So soon it had come. So soon. I only wish I could feel I'd not been so harsh with him. Hello, Mother. Pierre. Thank God. Oh. Oh, here at last. My own dear boy. Oh, an awful risk you're running. Your life is in danger here. My life was my life, Meta. I had to come down to you now. Well, you've given the lie to Kari. I can leave you now in peace. Believe me, what's this you're saying? <laughs> and where do you think you can go? Oh, Pierre. My time's nearly over. What? I haven't much longer to stay. I, I was running away from my sorrows. I thought I'd be free from them here. Are you cold? Are your hands and feet cold? Yes, Pierre. It will soon be over. Oh. When you see my eyes grow dim, you must close them very gently and arrange a coffin for me. See that it's a fine one, dear. Oh, no, of course not. No, don't, Mother. There's time to talk of coffins. Yes, yes. You see how much they've left us? Just like that. Mother, I know it's my fault. No point in reminding me. You know. It was that old liquor. That's the cause of all our pain. You were drunk, my boy. My dear boy. You didn't know what you were doing. And that dreadful ride on the reindeer. No wonder you were so strange. Yes, yes, let's forget all that nonsense. Let's forget the whole silly thing. Let's store up all our sorrows till later, till some other day. Let's have a nice long chat about this, that, and everything. Let's forget what's sad or unpleasant. Why, look there. Dear old pussy. Still alive. Well, who would have thought it? At night she seems so restless. You know what that means, don't you? Is there any local gossip? 
They say there's a girl around here who's pining for the height. Yes, and um, Ma's mother, is, is he settling down? They say she pays no heed to the old folks' tears and prayers. You ought to visit them. You might be helpful to her. And the blacksmith is... What's he doing? Don't talk about the blacksmith. I'd much rather tell you her name. Her name is... You know, her name Yes, yes. Now let's have our nice long talk about this, that, and everything. Shall I fetch you a drink? Are you thirsty? Can you stretch in that little bed? Let me look. Why, this is surely the bed I had as a boy. You'd sit on the edge every evening and sing to me rhymes and songs. Yes, yes. And do you remember how we used to play at sledges when your father had gone away? Oh. A blanket was our sledge apron and the floor was an ice-bound floor. Yes, yes, but do you remember what was the best thing of all? Our fiery Arab horses, though I could ever forget. Our cat we borrowed. We perched her up on the stool. And drove away up hill and down dale to Soria Moria Castle. The castle that's west of the moon. The castle that's... Button. A stick you found in the corner of the cupboard was your whip. I sat in front like the driver. Yes, and you shook the reins and turned round as we galloped and asked me if I were cold. Oh, bless you, you ugly old beauty. You're always a loving soul. <gasps> oh, why are you moaning? My back, dear. Aching on these hard boards. Well, sit up then. I'll hold you. No, Pia. I want to leave. Leave? I'm longing to get away. Oh, we'll wrap you up in the bedclothes. I'll sit on the edge of the bed and we'll while away the evening. I'll sing as you used to sing. I'll sing to you rhymes and songs. Please, Pierre, will you bring my prayer book? I'm uneasy in my mind. In Soria Maria Castle, king and prince are giving a feast. Now lie back upon your cushions. I'm going to drive you there. But, Pierre, am I invited? Yes, both of us will be there. Gee up. Look alive there, Blackie. Mother, you're not cold, are you? Oh, now we're making headway. Grawny's got into her stride. Yeah, dear. I can hear bells ringing. Jingling sleigh bells, dear. It's a ghostly hollow clanging. We're driving over a fjord. Pierre. Oh, I'm frightened. What's that sighing and that eerie whispering? It's only the pine trees, Mother, murmuring on the hills. Lights are gleaming in the distance. Can you see them dancing? Yes. On guard outside stands St. Peter. He's inviting you straight in. The greeting? With honor. He's offering you some wine. The cakes to offer? He has a whole plate of them. And our parson's wife's making a coffee, piping hot. Am I going to meet her? Only if you want to, dear. You're driving your poor old mother to a lovely party. Gee up. Look alive there, Blackie. Are you sure we're on the right road? It's an easy road to follow. But the journey is long and tough. But the castle's there in front of us. We'll be inside very soon. I'll lie back and close my eyes now and trust to you, my own dear boy. Put your best foot forward, Gorney. There's a huge crowd gathering there. They're clamoring at the entrance. Hey! Pierre Gint and his mother are here. What's that, Mr. St. Peter? My mother may not come in. You'll search far and wide, I can tell you, and not find so honest a soul. Of myself, I'll say nothing. I can go back the way I came. If you ask me, well, I'll stay here. If not, well, I'll still be content. I've told as many whoppers as the father of lies himself. I call my mother an old hen because she clucked so loud and long. But you must esteem and honor and please her and make her happy. You won't find anyone better in our part of the world these days. Hoo-hoo! Dear God the Father, St. Peter, you'll catch it now. Just stop that bullying, Peter. Mother Orsay is welcome here. Ha-ha, <laughs> there you are. Here. Ha-ha, there you are. What did I tell you? St. Peter's piped down already. Oh, Mother, what is it? Tell me. Oh, don't stare at me like that, Mother. Say something. It's Peter, your boy. Well, 
You can rest now, Crony. The journey's come to an end. Uh, thank you, dear, for all that you gave me. The flashings and the kisses, too. But now you must thank me, Mother, this kiss. The fare for the drive. Pia. Who is it? It's Harvey, your neighbor, Pia. What? Pia. Well, you put an end to her sorrow and suffering. Dear God, she is sleeping soundly. Oh, is she? She, she is dead. You see that she's decently buried. I must get away from here. Are you going far? Away to sea. As far as that? Yes, and farther still. Columbia Workshop presentation of Pierre Gint. And after the usual 15 second station identification break, you will hear the further adventures of Pierre Gint, played by Ralph Richardson and the Old Vic Theater Company. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Gint's youth is over. Orza is dead. And Pierre goes away. Away from Norway. Away from his past. Pierre Gint is still on the run. Up in the forest stands the unfinished hut. The hut he built for Solvay. And there Solvay waits for Pierre. For 40 years, Pierre travels the globe, running away from himself, dreaming the dreams first born in his childhood, haunted by his beliefs in his native folklore's trolls and the boy. Solve gave him her love, but his memories of other girls, his inability to confess to her his weaknesses, his need always to play the hero in life as well as in his dreams, drives him on and on. He sails for foreign shores, to Charleston in the Carolinas, where he becomes a wealthy, well-fed, well-groomed trader. Drink, gentlemen, if man is meant for pleasure, let him take his pleasure. The past, the past, what's done is done. To China, where he adds a title for himself. I have money in my pocket and I am myself, Sir Peter Gint. Uh-huh. Uh, now I think I'm going to bed. To Africa, where he schemes to realize his dream of becoming emperor of the world and meets the fair Anitra. 
Do you know what life is, child? No. But teach me, please. To float dry shod down the stream of life being yourself. That, that is life. To Egypt, a hundred other places, and at last, so gaudy his dreams, he is confined for a while in an asylum for the deluded. In all this time, while Pierre wanders the far-off places, living incredibly, Salve waits, waits for him in the small hut he built high in the mountains. His adventures, now finished chapters, his love affairs cast aside like worn-out clothing, Pierre, still seeking the answer to his lifelong quest, returns to his homeland. And stripped of all his worldly goods, the old man grovels on the ground, reflecting upon his past life. mother again. Mm, the ship went down. I escaped with my life, but I lost all I had. <laughs> What's it matter? The great thing in life is to fill your belly. Fill it with onions. Well, what's it matter? I'll be cunning. I'll set some snares. There's a stream nearby, so I won't go thirsty. I'll still be a lord of creation here. And when I die... I suppose I will. I'll creep beneath a fallen tree like a bear. I'll cover myself with leaves, and on the bark I'll scratch in big letters. Here lies Pierre Gint, a decent fellow, emperor over all the beasts. <laughs> emperor, you silly old buffoon. You are no emperor. You are just this... Onion. And I'm going to peel you, my little peer. Neither tears nor prayers will help you now. There's the outer layer, all bruised and broken. The juice is gone, if it ever had any. This layer here with the hard, coarse skin is the fur hunter of Hudson Bay. The next layer is like a crown. Thank you. We'll throw that away without more ado. Here's the archaeologist. Short, but sturdy. And here's the prophet. Juicy and fresh. He stinks, as the proverb says, of lies. <laughs> it's enough to bring tears to an honest man's eyes. This layer, so soft, and immaculate is the man who lived for gaiety. The next one looks poorly. It's shot through with black. Eh? There's quite a multitude of layers. When am I going to get to the heart? Ah. There isn't one. Right through to the middle it layers and layers each getting smaller. Ah, nature is witty. Yeah. It blazes with thought. Once you start thinking, you start stumbling too. And as a matter of fact, I can smile at that danger. I seem to be firmly set on all fours. That hut in the forest, I could swear. I know I've seen this building before, those reindeer antlers over the door, that mermaid carved on the end of a gable. Lies. It's no mermaid. Nails and boards. A boat to keep out of goblin thoughts. Salve, one who remembered 
One who forgot. One who had faith. And one who had none. Oh, misery. My empire was here. Here turns away and runs away deep into the forest. The button molder, carrying his bag of tools and a huge casting ladle, comes up to peer from a side path. Good evening, old man. Good evening, my friend. You're in a great hurry. Where are you going? To a funeral. Oh, really? My sight's not good. Excuse me. Does your name happen to be Pierre? Yes, it does. Pierre Gint. Well, I call that luck. I've been searching for Pierre Gint everywhere. Oh, what do you want? Well, you see... I'm a button molder. I want you for my ladle. For what? What for? You are to be melted down. Melted? Yes. My ladle's been cleaned and it's empty. Your grave is dug. Your coffin is ordered. I have orders here from my employer to bring him your soul without any l delay. You can't do that. I've had no warning. It's the custom at funerals and births to give the chief guest a tremendous surprise. But, my good man, surely there's some mistake. I'm worthy of better treatment than this. I'm not so bad as you seem to think. I've done my share of good deeds on earth. You're entirely missing the point, my dear man. It's because your sins were such puny ones that you're going to escape perpetual torment and are ending, like most, in the casting ladle. Get behind me, Satan. My friend, you're under a great delusion. You are, as you yourself have said, nothing great in the way of a sinner. Scarcely even a middling one. Well, now you're talking reasonably. But I think it would be going too far if I were to call you virtuous. I certainly don't lay claim to that. Well, then, we'll say betwixt and between. A sinner in the true grand style is hardly ever met nowadays. Sinning like that takes strength and purpose. There's more to it than splashing in the mud. That's perfectly true. The sulfur pool is not for those who have splashed in the mud. And therefore, my friend, I can go as I can. And therefore, my friend, you'll be melted down. Come, you know the trade, so you'll understand that a casting can sometimes have a flaw. A button, for instance, may have no loop. What would you have done with it? Thrown it away. Oh, yes. Your father was a squanderer. But my employer is very careful. He throws away nothing. He finds a use for the useless as raw material. You were meant to be a shining button on the world's waistcoat. But your loop gave way. So you must be merged again into the mass. But you don't mean to say you're going to melt me down with any... Tom, Dick, or Harry, this ladle business is the ending of Gint. My inmost soul revolts at but it. But, my dear Pierre, what difference can it make to you? You've never been yourself. I've not been myself. <laughs> I could almost laugh. Pierre Gint, not himself. You're wasting my time. Pierre Gint has never been himself. What do you mean by being yourself? Well, that's an astounding question from you. Why only just now? No. Tell me, please. To be yourself is to free the best by extinguishing the worst in yourself. Huh? But I think that that will be lost on you, so we'll put it more simply. To carry out the master's intention in every detail. How about the man that's never been told what the master intended to do with him? His intuition should tell him that. Uh, listen, I'll give up my claim to be myself. It wouldn't have been easy to prove anyhow. I'll accept that part of the case as lost. But we were talking of sinning just now. I felt the shoes of my conscience pinch, and I said to myself, Yes, you're a sinner. <laughs> 
Now you're beginning all over again. No, no, not at all. I mean simply sinning on the grand scale. Not in deeds alone, but in purpose and word. Oh, when I was abroad, I sank so low. <laughs> so you say. But if you could show me a list... A, a, a list mm. of my sins. Give me time. Give me time. Very well, Peer Gint. We'll meet again at the next crossroad. Where shall I look? At the next crossroad? I'd rather go to the sulfur pool and completely lose my identity. The list. I must find the list of my sins. I must find it. Uh, there goes a shooting star falling, falling. Greetings from Pierkin's brother shooting star. Shine forth, be extinguished, disappear forever. <laughs> Is there no one, no one in this great world? No one in the depths? No one in heaven? So soul can go back so wretchedly poor into the gray mists of nothingness. Beautiful earth, do not be angry that I have trod you and left no mark. How mean is the spirit, how lavish is nature. How costly to pay with one's life for one's birth. I'll climb to the top of the highest peak. I'll see the sun rise once again. I'll gaze upon the promised land until my eyes are tired out. Then let the snow pile over me and on my tomb right. Here no one is buried. Again, where's your list of sins? What? The crossroads here? This is quick work. Your time is up. Everything's up. The owl smells the rat. Do you hear him hooting? It's a woman singing. What? What's that light in the mist over there? Only a cottage. There! There I shall find my list of sins. Hey, your time is up. Clear off! If your ladle were as big as a ship, it would still be too small for me and my list. To the third crossroads, Spear. Very well. Backwards or forwards, it's just as far within or without. The path is as narrow. No, I can hear it. A wild, endless cry. Bidding me go in, go back, go back home. Salve, pronounce the sentence on the sinner. It is he. Oh, praise be to God. Tell me how wickedly I've sinned. You have sinned in nothing. My only love. The list, fear again. Cry out, cry out, my sins aloud. You have made my life a beautiful song. Bless you for having come back to me. And blessed, oh, blessed be this Whitson morn. I am lost unless you can answer a riddle. Ask. Where has Pierre Gint been since you saw him last with the mark of destiny upon his brow? Where has he been since he first sprang forth as a thought newly made in the mind of God? Can you tell me that? If not, I must go to my last home in the land of shadows. Your riddle is easy. Then tell me, where was I? My real self, my whole self, my true self. Where was I with God's stamp upon my brow? In my faith and in my hope and in my love. My mother, my wife, you holy woman. Oh, hide me, hide me. Within your love. We shall meet 
meet at the last crossroads, Pierre. And then we'll see if I'll say no more. strains of Edvard Grieg's score echo in memory. The curtain comes down on the second and final American radio performance by the Old Vic Theatre Company of London, England. Ralph Richardson starred as Pierre Gint, Laurence Olivier played the Troll King and the Button Molder. Others in the Old Vic cast included Joyce Redmond as Solve, Ina Burrell as Orza, Margaret Layton as the Green Woman, and Nicolette Bernard as Ingrid. Harry Andrews acted as narrator. The Columbia Symphony Orchestra was conducted by Herbert Mengis. John Burrell is director of the Old Vic Players and has had for these two special 90-minute Columbia workshop presentations the association of Richard Sandville of CBS. Peer Gint by Henrik Ibsen was prepared for radio by Charles S. Monroe of the CBS Program Writing Division. Today's performance of Peer Gint and last week's Richard III, together comprised the only American radio appearances of the famous Old Vic Theatre Company of London, England, during their present limited season of repertory in New York under the auspices of Theatre Incorporated. 